See this little guy here? He almost got me scammed. Let's go over some red flags that you need to watch out for when dealing online. Let's talk about signs every toy collector should watch out for when buying online. So, love or hate it, Facebook groups can be a great place to get good deals to help add to your collection. On the flip side of that, it also seems to be a place where scammers lurk and are often looking to take advantage of you. I've done hundreds of deals online and these are some common warning signs to keep a lookout for. Before we jump in, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you like the content we're publishing here on the channel. Too good of a price from a random person. So when I went looking for the Generation 1 hardhead body to fit the head I showed you earlier at the start of this video, I knew what the price should roughly be for what I wanted. I had one guy, let's call him Donnie, who offered me a complete Generation 1 hardhead that had the body, the weapons, and the head for the low price of $55 Canadian, which is $30 America. He even said it included shipping. The cost of shipping has greatly increased over the last few years, so this made it even more of a red flag. As a Generation 1 collector, I know a complete hardhead can easily sell for $110 Canadian or about $80 USD, and this guy was offering me one for $55, which included shipping. This was too much of a good thing. Red flag raised. Unable to provide pictures and references in a timely manner? Most of the time, when dealing with people online, you don't know them. Because of that, you need to ask for references and detailed pictures to see what you want to buy from them. However, if they can provide references on other deals they've done or provide pictures to you in a timely manner, you need to be wary of this deal. Donnie tried to give me two random names for references. When I asked if these people were still in the group we were dealing with, uh, he said he didn't know. He didn't think they were still there. They could have possibly left. Well, this was kind of useless. He followed up with the references request with a picture of a potentially completed mailing package, but I guess he forgot his name because neither the person on the receiver or the sending labels were named Donnie. Wow, this is a major goof. Even when someone can provide pictures, you always have to be cautious. <laughs> Pro tip, often scammers will source their pictures from eBay. Take the pictures the person has given you and go search for the item on eBay, both sold and active listings. If they are a scammer, more times than not, you'll find those pictures on there. Guess what? That's where Donnie got all his pictures he was sending me. He was simply pretending they were his items. It took me about two minutes to find the listings they were pulled from. If someone's acting all kinds of shady, your gut will tell you. Most scammers will be giving off scammer vibes, and Donnie was no different. While I talked to him for several days, partially to expose him as a scammer, he once mentioned me at 3.40 a.m. Now, if he was supposed to be in the same time zone like he told me, you would never message someone that early, let alone expect that person to be up and answer you. Normally, people are asleep at that time, and that chance we were both there was totally slim. Obviously, he was in a different time zone, and this was a huge red flag. During the time when I was talking to Donnie, he kept pressuring me to buy. He'd say, hey, my PayPal is ready, are you sending? He even went so far to once ask me to pay while we were still discussing his failed excuses for references I had previously mentioned. Dealing on Facebook? Check out their full profile and see if you can find anything fishy. Normally, scammer accounts all look the same. Their profile pictures will have been updated in the last few days, but then their previous posts would be like 10 years ago. Did a real person just update their profile so they could sell some toys? Possibly, but the red flags are starting to add up. Also, take a look at their friends and see if you have any mutuals or are all their friends have really foreign strange names. They can't all be princes from some made up country. If a person refuses to use PayPal goods and services, this is a bit of a red flag. This is a commonly accepted practice when proceeding with online deals. Now, there are a lot of people who simply might not have PayPal and that is their choice. However, it is also your choice not to deal with anyone that might not provide this option as you're only trying to protect yourself. Often users will simply add the goods and services fees into the deal's price, which should work out fine and it protects you yourself in the end. When it came down to it, the guy I mentioned earlier, Donnie, was a scammer. I know this and I did my part. I messaged the admins of the group and had him removed. That being said, he and a hundred more of his friends will be back and trying to pull scams the next day. 
So take a note of what we talked about in this video and make sure you take care of yourself when buying online. Let me know if you've almost been scammed and how you figured it out in the comments below. Want to hear more about the dealings with Donnie? Check out episode 4 of the Everything Transformers, Everything G.I. Joe podcast where I go more in depth on this whole situation. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.